I'm Dr. James Wilcox, the Department of Family Medicine. In this video, we'll demonstrate how to evaluate for a rotator cuff tear. When evaluating for a rotator cuff tear, your patient might have uh, shoulder pain, or more likely they'll have weakness in the shoulder. They'll have pain on the lateral edge of the shoulder, especially at nighttime when they're sleeping. And they'll have difficulty, depending on the rotator cuff uh, injury, they might have difficulty reaching up over their head or reaching behind their back. So when evaluating for rotator cuff tear, you want to choose the musculoskeletal or the soft tissue preset. You do you want your marker dot to always be towards the patient's right or their head? You want to start home base is the biceps tendon or the bicipital groove. The subscapularis will be medial to that. Infraspinatus and teres minor will be lateral. And the supraspinatus will be superior to the bicipital groove, which is a U shape on the humerus with the biceps resting comfortably inside. The subscapularis tendon will be medial to this. You want to have your patient externally rotate their hand and that will bring the subscapularis tendon into view. The fibers will all be consistent and will have a bird's beak appearance. You want to evaluate this tendon all the way to the superior aspect and the inferior aspect looking for any defects in the subscapularis tendon. Once you've evaluated it in long axis, you'll rotate your probe 90 degrees and evaluate the tendon in short axis. Again, looking for any large defects or tears in the tendon. Make sure to continue to wag the probe because anisotropy can mistakenly look like a torn tendon. Once we've evaluated the subscapularis in its entirety, we'll turn back to a transverse view, find the bicipital groove again, and then we will go laterally to find the infraspinatus. Infraspinatus is going to be lateral and superior. And again, when evaluating the inferior spinatus, we want to look at the inferior aspect all the way to the most anterior aspect, evaluating for any signs of tear or inconsistency within the rotator cuff tendon. And then we will turn the probe 90 degrees. And again, evaluate the tendon for any signs of tear or pathology. We'll have our patient put their hand on the back side of their hip. This brings the supraspinatus out from underneath the acromion, and we'll evaluate the supraspinatus on the anterior and superior part of the shoulder. And the supraspinatus, again, has that consistent bird's beak appearance with tendon fibers running in the similar fashion. We want to evaluate that tendon all the way until it disappears 
underneath the acromion. We want to look for any signs of incongruency. Look for any signs of tendon rupture or tear. Once we've evaluated the tendon in long axis, we'll turn the probe 90 degrees and evaluate the tendon in short axis, looking for any tears.